And the truth is, while any and has integrations with many third party services, there are just millions of them out there. So it makes it almost impossible for any and to have native integrations with all of them, which is exactly why it's super crucial for you to understand what an API is and especially how to use HTTP requests. And that is basically my aim here. And this is hopefully going to help you understand how you can connect to tools that have no native integrations in N8N. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. API stands for application programming interface and it essentially is a set of rules and protocols that allows an application to communicate with another and to demonstrate that i have an example here prepared for us where we have any and as one of that application trying to communicate with the second application which in this case is youtube right and to understand this better and understand exactly how an api works and how api makes this possible i'm gonna first take your focus to this very poorly designed diagram that aims to reflect youtube's infrastructure and architecture in an oversimplified way so for the sake of this example let's just imagine youtube had only these three functions right and every time we call one of these functions what's going to happen is a backend code is going to start executing which again is represented by this random picture i got from google images basically you can think of it as some complex backend code running in order to process any of these requests and without an api the problem is that only internal users would be able to use these functions and nobody from the outside world would be able to do so because we don't have api in place right and that would mean that we wouldn't be able to connect to youtube from tools like n8n Therefore, it would also mean that to be able to upload a video on YouTube, we would have to log into the YouTube app and using their app is the only way we would be able to upload a video. And obviously that wouldn't be great, right? And so the first step here is going to be YouTube getting these functions from being only usable internally to exposing it to the internet. And that exposure is exactly what we call an API, right? So in this case, now what we have here is YouTube's API layer and this this is what we are going to use in order to interact with YouTube. And this is invariably the same with every other applications that we integrate through n 8 and so for example when we look at all of these third-party integrations that we have within it these applications are all doing the same thing where they have parts of their application exposed to the internet through an API layer and so right now as the consumer of YouTube's API we don't have to care about what's going on in the background as they have abstracted that away from us they're like hey look I'll take care of all the complexities that's going on whenever you call these functions but the only thing I want from you is to follow a certain rules right and the rules can be first of all there are going to be API layers that requires authentication for example let's say if I were to upload a video obviously I would need to authenticate first in order for you YouTube to understand who is sending this request and to which account to upload this video to right that's just an example we are going to be looking into that in a while but I just wanted to let you know this much for now and now we are coming to the second part of the puzzle that makes up an API and that is the medium that we use in order to be able to send these requests right because right now we have an API but how are we really going to be connecting like how are we going to be sending requests from our N8 and workflow to these APIs. And that missing piece here is the HTTP request. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys here have seen HTTP request nodes in N8N. This is essentially a protocol that allows us to send packets of data across the network. And it's also what's being used under the hood within all of these integrated tools in N8N. Whatever you use here is actually using HTTP requests in order to be able to connect to them, just like what we have or just like shown in this diagram here. Now let's first understand what a HTTP request is better and what its constituents are so that the next part of this video makes more sense. So again, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and essentially it is a protocol or a vehicle that allows us to send packets of data across the network from a client to a server, right? So in our case above here, any N corresponds to the client and YouTube corresponds to the server. So we are sending a HTTP request. In our case, we were sending a request to upload a video on our YouTube channel and YouTube will process that request. And that is what the image basically represents. This is the server that is going to process that request. And then 
it is going to return the result as a HTTP response. Now let's take a look at the constituents of this protocol. The first part of it is the request line and within the request line, we have things like the URL. This is basically the address of the API that we are trying to send a request to. And the next element that we have within the request line is the method of our request. So it, it basically describes our intention with our request, right? And get means to get something from that application through the API, while post usually means you want to create something within the application and put being you trying to modify something that already exists and delete is obviously super straightforward. You're essentially just trying to delete something within the application, right? And while we explain this, let's also take a look at the HTTP request node so that we understand what each of these corresponds to. The first thing we looked at is the URL and the URL in this node here corresponds to this field here, which again is pointing at the address of that particular API you're trying to use. And then we got the method here and there are other methods here, but I'm not going to be touching on them since the West majority is only ever going to use the four methods that we went over, which are get, delete, post, and put. So these are the two things that we looked at, and these constitutes the request line of the HTTP request. And the next thing that we have here is the header section. And inside the header section, we can determine things such as the content type that we are trying to send as a request. This basically tells the server what kind of data to expect. So for example, if you are trying to send a video as a request, then you would have to set your content type accordingly, right? But in most cases, the requests are made in JSON and we are going to look at that in a bit. And another part of the header can be the authorization. For example, whenever we want to use an application and it needs authentication or authorization, we will be using uh, we will be specifying this part of the header for the HTTP request. And this is actually exactly what happens every time we configure the third party nodes that any and has integrated. For instance, let's say we got this air table and let's say we want to create a record. This part here that says credential to connect with, whenever we set our credential, what's happening under the hood is that any and is actually setting up the HTTP request for us. And whenever we execute this workflow, it is doing the exact same thing as we would do with this HTTP request node where it sends these HTTP requests. But the beautiful thing and which also makes any and super powerful, especially for non-technical people, is the fact that they make this so simple to the point that they just give us this nice little UI where we just have to select the things visually and we are pretty much done with it. And for example, for this particular node, you might think that it's only sending a single request every time you execute. But what's really happening here and for the case of this base and table is that because these are account specific, everybody's going to have a different base. Everybody's going to have different bases and different tables. What they're doing under the hood is once you connect your credential, before you even execute this node here, they are already sending a HTTP request in order to get bases that belong to you and also the tables that belong to you. So this is how fundamental HTTP requests are. And it is also the fundamental building blocks of tools like this and any other tools for that matter, right? So it is a very important concept for you to understand. But anyway, let's continue. So we already looked at the request line. We looked at the method and then we looked at the headers. And the last thing that we have here is the request body, right? And a request body is basically the input parameters that you are sending to a server when you send these HTTP requests. So in our case here, you can see we have a JSON, which by the way is almost always in JSON unless you were to send some other kinds of formats other than text, such as a file or an image, okay? And so the body of the request is basically going to contain the details of your request and it's going to be different for different kinds of requests. So in this case, what we have here, this body could be for, let's say you are uploading your profile on a website. So having a, your name and your age would make sense in this scenario, right? But for example, if you were to send a request to a weather API, in that case, obviously your body is going to look something like, hey, I want to get the weather for this current location. Let's say uh, Kuala Lumpur, this is the city I'm in right now in Malaysia. And then I can also say something like the uh, metric I want, or what do you call that? I'll just call it unit of measure, okay? I will even make it shorter, unit of measure. And let's say I want, it to, I want to see it in Celsius, okay? So a body, the body for a request to a weather API would look something like this, while for updating a profile would look something like 
what we just had. Let me just go back. Something like this. So the body of the request is, again, just going to include the details of the request. And so that is the body section of a HTTP request, which, by the way, can be empty in cases where, let's say, you are just sending a request to get data or to delete data, right? Most of the times, you only include body in requests where we have a post as the method or put as the method, because as you remember, post is to create something within that application and put is to update something that already exists within the application. All right, so now that we understand the theoretical part of things, I also want to demonstrate it to you using a practical example so that it makes much more sense for you. And the way I'm going to do this is actually by connecting to a single service using two different methods. The first method we are going to use is any as integrated node for that particular service. And the second method is by using the regular HTTP request node, sending the exact same request to the exact same service so that we can understand how we would have connected to it if N8N did not have an integration for it. And the truth is, while N8N has integrations with many third-party services, there are just millions of them out there, so it makes it almost impossible for N8N to have native integrations with all of them, which is exactly why it's super crucial for you to understand what an API is, and especially how to use HTTP requests. And that is basically my aim here, by showing you two of these methods to connect to this particular service that we are going to choose. And this is hopefully going to help you understand how you can connect to tools that have no native integrations in N8N. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. All right, so I've decided what I'm gonna go with for this example. And the first one, we're gonna be using the basic LLM chain, okay? And then using this basic LLM chain, we are gonna be sending a request to OpenAI. And the way we're going to do that is like this. So I'm gonna, uh, re should we use the chat trigger? That nah, doesn't really matter. We're just building a simple example anyway. So I'm gonna, Add OpenAI's chat model, okay, 4.0 mini, let's say 4.1 mini, 4.1 mini. And what I'm gonna say here is, let's just add a hard-coded value, okay? I'm gonna say, hi there, okay, very simply. So this is sending a message to OpenAI's LLM using a built-in node. So we got the response, hello, how can I assist you today? Perfect. But now, how were we to do this if this node wasn't integrated in NAN and we had to use HTTP request node for this? For that, the first thing we'll have to do is we'll have to go over to OpenAI's documentation. Okay, I'm gonna type that. And then let's click on Overview OpenAI API. And for any service, by the way, that you are trying to connect to, you can basically prefix API documentation with the name of the service. So let's say if you're trying to connect to Airtable, you can say OpenAI uh, Airtable API documentation and so on. So what we have here is the docs and we want to go to the API reference, okay, perfect. And while we are here, we have to look for the correct API endpoint. And I'm guessing it's chat completion. So let's take a look at what this is. You can see that they basically have whole documentations on how to use their API endpoints. And in this case, for create chat completion, it says creates a model response for the given chat conversation. Okay, I think this is what we are looking for, right? And you can see here to the right, this is an example request that we can send to their API. And right now it's using the curl format. We could also switch this to Python, and then we could switch this to Node.js, right? and then we could switch this to C Sharp. These are basically different ways they are teaching us to send requests to their API. And in our case, what we wanna use is curl. And the reason we want to use this is because when you go into the HTTP request node in N8N, you will find that there is a button that says import curl. And when you click on import curl and paste in the curl that we just copied, you can see that it literally just automatically configured the whole HTTP request for us, which is super cool. It basically saves us from having to, you know, uh, get it done manually. And you can see here that when we go back to our diagram, we got the request line, the URL, and then the method. Let's take a look at how it looks like right now. So our method is post, and then our URL is api.openai.com. We want chat completions. Perfect. Okay, so we got this part of our HTTP request done. And then when we look at the headers, you can see that in the headers, we have the authorization parameters being set. And also for the value, it is giving a placeholder, which I'll have to replace with my actual API key. And again, just like we saw in the diagram, the next part of this request consists of the body. And because our request 
method is post using JSON body makes sense, right? In this case, we are sending input parameters that determines the model that we are trying to get access to and also the conversation history that we want the LLM to refer to in order to generate a response. So in our case, the model is 4.1 and then the messages here starts with a developer message saying you are a helpful assistant. You can think of this as the system prompt when we configure our LLMs or our agents. That's pretty much what this part is doing. And then we got the second message, which is basically what our message is going to be about. So I'm going to say the same thing that I think I said, hey there, right? I'm going to also re uh, write that one here so that they are similar. With that, we actually have our request ready. I just need, again, to replace this with an actual API key. Quick tip, never expose your API key to anybody as if you do they can literally start using your account and start accumulating cost on your end which you would have to pay for their usage so just make sure you never expose it to anybody and in my case right now i'm showing it but i'm going to delete it right after i show the scene so just to let you know guys never expose it to anybody and here i'll just paste in my api key in place of this placeholder okay let me just check if it's correct there has to be a space between bearer and the api key by the way a better way to set your authorization is by using this authentication field which basically saves your configuration for you so the next time you use this http request and you want to send a request to open ai you can just head over to your authentication and then get your uh, credential that you have just configured instead of having to rewrite it every time you want to send a request or sorry every time you want to use this http request for a particular service okay now that we have this complete and ready when i execute this workflow it should generate a very similar output and you can see that indeed that is the case hello how can i help you today is the response for this request and so now you understand how to send requests to services that are not integrated in N8N by using the HTTP request, using also more broadly the API concept, right? And so with that, I hope this video was helpful for you. And if it was, please make sure to leave it a like or even a comment as engagement truly helps with the outreach of my videos and with the channel. And one more thing, I also host a premium community on school called Business AI Alliance Premium which is currently at 42 members and is growing rapidly. The current price for the first 50 members is only $44 as a courtesy to early supporters. What you get inside are all my N8M builds thus far. N8M tech support by me whenever you get stuck, three live calls per week. And apart from that, you get access to plenty of classroom materials. For instance, if you were to head to the classroom section, you can see all these different sections here. So we got all my builds, which is what I was talking about earlier. So you get access to business templates, face the shorts, educational templates, and also exclusive builds that I'm actually working on currently as well. In this case, for example, we got contextual hybrid rag, and I have a documentation created for this video. And all the way at the bottom, you can also get access to the template that I showed in this video, which you can just import directly into your canvas and whatnot. And apart from that, we have everything else here, building effective agents, where I talk about different kind of patterns you can use in order to build effective agents. But anyway, this already became longer than it's supposed to be. So I'll just leave it at that. And with that said, I hope to see you in. If I don't have a great rest of your day, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.